Hey guys, welcome to our video. We're going to look at a question that I was asked recently, and I thought it was a fantastic question, so I wanted to share it with you. And we'll specifically look at the details here and then kind of broaden it out to make this applicable to anybody dealing with a debt buyer. So the question was, I owe Dell money on a computer. Now Portfolio Recovery Associates is suing me on that debt. Does this mean I owe Portfolio since I owe Dell? Again, it's a great question. And let's sort of broaden it out. So we have an original creditor and we have a debt buyer. And actually, we'll look at this next screen because it's really important to understand the difference between these two. The original creditor, in this case, Dell, but it could be Discover Card, Capital One, any company that we may borrow money from or get a credit card from, that's who we have the direct relationship. We have a contract with them that we have borrowed money and we owe them money. Now, compare that to a debt buyer. A debt buyer is some third party out there who then goes to the original creditor and buys the debt. At least that's what they tell us. That's what they claim. They say, we did go buy the debt from Dell or Synchrony Bank or Capital One, Chase, Discover, Bank of America, whoever it is. Well, that's what they claim. And so we have to keep in mind there is this huge difference because if you can sort of think about it this way, if the original creditor sues you and the judge says, hey, in your wallet, did you ever have a Dell credit card or you know, a, a Bank of America credit card, a Synchrony Bank credit card? You're like, yeah, yeah, I did. Well, did you use that? Yes. Did you pay it back? No. Okay, you lose. Now, it's actually a little more complicated than that, but that's how a lot of judges look at it. But compare that to... A debt buyer and say, well, did you borrow money from Portfolio Recovery? Did you have a Portfolio Recovery credit card? Did Portfolio Recovery loan you money for a car? Did they loan you money to fix your air conditioner? Okay, it's different. So we have to understand that key difference. Here's the other difference. It's directly related to that. There's a huge difference in owing the debt and the debt buyer owning the debt. So I have to keep that in mind. Owing versus owning. So I may owe Dell Computer for a printer, a laptop, whatever I bought. But that is not the same as portfolio recovery owning that debt. So here's one way to think about it. Imagine there's a camera. And the debt buyer, portfolio recovery, they want the camera to be focused on you borrowing the money. Okay, whether it's a credit card or a, a loan for a computer, whatever it is. And that's what they want the focus to be on. You owe that money. You got the money. You got the benefit. Well, that's fine. But remember, Dell did not sue me. Bank of America did not sue me. Synchrony Bank did not sue me. Capital One did not sue me. It's some debt collector sued me. So we want to shift the camera to the debt collector and say, yeah, I may owe the money. But do I owe it to you? Because I only owe it to you if you truly own the debt, if you have purchased it, if you have bought the debt. And that's such a critical distinction to understand. And we first wrote about that, I think, in 2007. And it's been just incredibly helpful for us. And people around the country have told us really helpful to them to understand that distinction. Because when we first started doing these cases, Judges would say, well, John, I mean, doesn't your client owe the debt? I'm like, well, we owe it to the original creditor. And the judge would say, well, I mean, this company's bought the debt. I go, well, that's what they have to prove. They claim, they say, they argue they bought it, but they got to prove that in court. There's a difference between me owing the debt and the debt buyer owning the debt. And so I'm talking again back 2007, 2008. And we could sort of see the light bulb go off on judge, like, oh, yeah, of course, they have to prove this. And that has been a foundation of a lot of our success handling these types of cases. So remember this the original creditor did not sue, the debt buyer sued, so they have to prove that they own the debt. I know this is repetitious, but it's so vital, so important. I do trainings for lawyers and how to defend these cases. And I mean, halfway through the training, somebody would come up, but yeah, don't we owe, the, doesn't our client owe the original creditor? Like, maybe we do. 
But that's different than portfolio recovery, Midland funding, whoever it is, actually owning the debt. So because of this, because there is that distinction between a creditor and the debt buyer, between owing the debt and owning the debt, you have five options. So you can do bankruptcy. We very rarely recommend that because usually it's completely unnecessary and it's overkill, really. You can fight it on your own so you don't hire a lawyer. You do this on your own and we've got resources to help you. You settle it on your own. So again, you don't hire a lawyer. You pay money to the, the debt buyer. Again, we've got resources that can help you. Maybe you hire a lawyer to fight the case or hire a lawyer to settle the case. And with all these, you need to go through the analysis of each one of these. What are the advantages and disadvantages of each of these options so that you can figure out what's the best one for you? And it doesn't matter what your neighbor does, what your second cousin three times removed does. What matters is for you. What's the best decision for you? We have all sorts of videos going over these options, so I won't go over them here. But just understand, the reason you can fight this is because it's not the original creditor suing you. The reason you can hire a lawyer to fight it or settle it, again, you're dealing with a debt buyer who claims to have bought the debt. That's fundamentally different than the original creditor coming in and suing you. Hope that this is helpful to you. If you have any questions, give us a call or go to our website, alabamaconsumer.com. The phone number is 205-879-2447. Or to directly get a message to me, this will take you to our contact page. Just contact johnwatts.com. Now, if you're in another state, get with a lawyer in your own state because I'm not licensed outside of Alabama. And every state is different in how they handle debt collection type trials. But fundamentally, this premise, I think, will be helpful wherever you are. Then you just have to sort of apply it in your state. But if you're in Alabama, definitely give us a call. And I appreciate you watching this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.